Today, I would like to show you how you can create your own papers that look like a jelly plate expert has made them, but without a jelly plate. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to another video and welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art. Thank you very much for joining me today. As you can see, I have prepared some things that you would perhaps expect in combination with my jelly plate laying here on my table. But I found out a technique that you can do without having a jelly plate. <laughs> We can use the same things that we can use on a jelly plate and also some additional things that wouldn't work on a jelly plate. I think that's very cool. Um, and I would like to give you an alternative to having a jelly plate. I know that many of you like to have this jelly printed look especially in junk journals. It's a really great thing having those papers in a junk journal but not everyone can afford a jelly plate and I can totally understand that. Um, it's yeah, like a little bit expensive, I would say. If you want to have um, a good quality jelly plate, then you have to invest some money and the acrylic paints that you need for that are also not cheap. Yeah, you can't uh, steal them from somewhere. You have to buy them <laughs> if you want to have them. And I think I have found something that is really, really great as an alternative to a jelly plate. At the moment, I'm feeling a little bit like a broken record player. <laughs> because if you follow my channel, you have heard the following sentence for several times. <laughs> we are going to use, again, matte photo paper for inkjet printers. You have seen this photo paper in some of my other videos already. Um, if you have missed those videos, please check out the info box. I have created a playlist where I have put all of the videos in that were made with this photo paper, showing you different techniques, what you can do with this paper. This is, as I said, matte photo paper made for inkjet printers. The brand of this paper is photo paper direct as you can read here this kind of paper is also really good to print out digital paper it has a special surface that is made for printing photos as you can read on the package as well and when you buy a digital printable paper a junk journal kit for example and you get your files to print out then for your printer those files are nothing else than a photo for some people that is confusing, so I thought I quickly mentioned that. So um, please always make sure that you have the right uh, paper for your printer. So I mean, if you have an inkjet printer, make sure that the package says that it is made for inkjet printers. And if you have a laser printer, then please make sure that the package says for laser printer. But matte photo paper is always good for printing out digital paper. Why am I telling you that in this video? Because you can also do today's technique on a printed page. I will talk about that later and explain that more in detail. I have tried out several brands that uh, make photo paper for inkjet printers. They all work totally fine. I also have tried out this kind of paper for laser printers. Um, the print gets okay, I would say, but you can reach better results with paper for inkjet printers. Perhaps you would like to consider that if you don't have um, any paper like this and you want to buy a paper, then I can recommend to use this that is made for inkjet printers. So let's take this sheet and turn it into something that looks like a jelly plate expert has created it. On a jelly plate, you would use acrylic paints. For this technique on the photo paper, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks and also my Distress Oxide refillers. 
You could do this technique with the Distress inks as well, but with the oxide inks and the oxidation of the oxide inks, you get a way more interesting end result, but it would be possible with the normal inks as well. The oxide ink pads give you a really, really cool result, but if you want to go a step further and you want to have it really bam, then use the Distress Oxide refillers. You will see in a second what I'm talking about. So let's start with bubble wrapping. That is probably something that you would use on a jelly plate as well, especially if you are a beginner with your jelly plate. I'm going to use mustard seed oxide ink directly from my ink pad and I'm going to apply that here a little bit like randomly that doesn't have to be much and I also want to use cracked pistachio I'm trying to don't get the mustard seed to my cracked pistachio ink pad so I'm going to leave a little distance here in between of both of those colors Perhaps like this and now I'm going to take this and put it away for a few seconds and then I'm going to take some water and I'm going to make this paper really really wet you can see it comes up from the table a little bit that's absolutely no problem just take your fingers and press that down a little bit and then add more water so that the paper can soak the water and then it will go down to your table again relatively flat because now we want to take this turn it around and place it here and then I'm going to carefully press this down like this and then when you lift that up you have something like this and you might think oh no this didn't work I have a really big mess here please don't panic just take a dry paper towel put that on top and lift up the water and the ink that didn't go into the paper and you will see that you get something that looks really similar to what you could create with a jelly plate this is of course not finished yet but i think this is a really good starting point to go a step further you could dry this paper in between of the single steps that we are doing here but it is not necessary because this is now waterproof. If this is the first video that you are watching where I'm using this photo paper, you might think, hey, how is that possible? She has used distress oxide ink. That can't be possible. That can't be waterproof because oxide ink, of course, reacts with water to give you the oxide effect and it is water soluble. Meaning, normally, if you have something like this and you spritz water, everything would bleed, yeah, and <laughs> it would be um, destroyed when you spritz water. But on this photo paper, water, it stays there where it is, yeah, so you can go over here with your finger, nothing will smear. Since you have printed this and took off the water and the ink that has stayed on the paper, the rest that you have on the paper is waterproof. For me, mind-blowing. <laughs> and the cool thing is, you can print several things on top here now. So let's try that. I'm taking my bubble wrapping again, and I want to use this, this area where the cracked pistachio was to put some more ink here. because I want to try to print over the yellow here, the mustard seed. So I'm spritzing more water. As you can see, this stays here. 
And then I'm taking my bubble wrapping and I'm pressing this down on top of this. Lifting that up. Take a dry paper towel to lift up the water and the ink that didn't go into the paper. And then you can see we have a light printing here on top with the cracked pistachio. This looks so light because cracked pistachio compared to the mustard seed, of course, is relatively light. But this shall be a background. Yeah, You can go on and print several things on top of this and use this as a background. And that's what, I'm, uh, what I want to do. Um, I also want to use chipped sapphire. And I want to show you um, that you can use the craziest things for this technique. For example, you could take something like this. This is a paper ruffle. This originally was an old map and I've just um, sewn it together with my sewing machine. So let's try that. I'm taking an acrylic uh, plate to protect my table. And then I'm taking the ink pad and I'm carefully going over this little piece here to put some of the ink on top, like this. Then let's decide where we want to put that. I think here it would look really great. But of course, that really doesn't matter. Please put it where you want it. <laughs> so then we are going to take this little guy. We are turning it upside down, press it a little bit, and it also really helps if you have a brayer to be able to roll over this a little bit. As you can see, some of the ink comes out here. That is really good because that gives a really loose and artsy print in the end. Then you can take it off. This piece I'm now going to let dry so that I don't get water to my ink pad. Yeah, In this session, I will not use this again to make sure that I don't get water to my ink pad. And instead of using this, I will use a dry and new one. This, of course, is not lost. When this is dry, it has a really nice oxidation on top. It has some color from the ink. And you can, of course, use this when it's dry in your junk journal as an embellishment. What I'm trying to say is, with this technique, you can at the same time mm, yeah, dye some papers or fabrics or whatever you want to use and you have them in the right color for your journal. Here is lots of water, as you can see, so we are going to take this off as well. And then we have something that looks like it was made with a jelly plate. I am totally in love. <laughs> if you use those paper ruffles or other paper embellishments um, that you have perhaps pre-made for your journal, then you can also use some that already have some ink on top. Look at this, for example. I have just sewn some scraps together with my sewing mas machine with a zigzag stitch here. And what you can see here is ink. Yeah, uh, th This is just some mixture of <laughs> several different oxide inks that I have used to create this piece here. Um, so let me show you what happens if you use this. So this is dry, by the way. yeah. Only use dry things, please. You don't want to get water to your ink pad. But we can use something like this as well. Let's use chipped sapphire again. And I'm just going to take my ink pad again. And I'm going to put the ink carefully to this little piece here like this and as you can see it's not necessary that the whole thing is covered up with the ink 
this is totally enough for this technique. So let's put that somewhere as well, perhaps here on the bottom. I'm spritzing again, really much water. Then I'm turning this around and this little thread, I want to put like so, so that it also gets in between of this piece and my photo paper. You will see in a second why. Just placing this here. Take my brayer. Go over this. When the paper comes up here so much, you can also take an acrylic plate, plate, lay that down here so that you can roll over this with much pressure so that everything gets pressed down to the photo paper really, really well. Like this. And when we lift that up, oh, <laughs> and take the water off, we have a really, really gorgeous print. This nearly looks like it was scanned with a scanner. This is so amazing. So let me just show you that a little bit closer. Can you see the thread here that I have crumbled and put in between? Isn't this just crazy? You can see exactly here the stitching. If you look not too close, it looks like it is made with a sewing machine. That is absolutely cra crazy. The texture of the paper comes through here in this area. And what you also perhaps can see here is that some of the colors that I had on this piece here have transferred to the paper as well. So this is not only chipped sapphire now, but we have some of the ink that was on this little cluster um, on the paper now. And that for me is absolutely fantastic. Look at this. This is so, so cool. Um, and what you also can try is um, when you have print it with this little piece and it is still wet you could try to take this again um, spritz some more water <clears throat> and try to get a second generation of this sometimes that works sometimes not but of course you can try that just roll over it and see if you get something from that. And as you can see, it worked. And you get a really like, light, like pastel-ish print here. I think I want to try another ruffle here. I have this one here, so this is dry. Yeah, it's a new one. And here you can see we have some colors here already those come from oxide inks and sprays as well so let's see what we can get with that i'm going to use cracked pistachio and just put that here to the ruffle like this and for this i want to try to take some sewing thread Just take a little piece like this, spritz your water first so that you don't uh, blow away the thread with your water bottle. Then I'm placing this here. Then I'm going to take this. We have another thread here. That's fine. We can just put it like this and then turn it around. Place this little guy here, take your plate and just roll over that. Ooh. Oh, that's really light. Okay, so that, uh, I don't like that. <laughs> here we can't see so much, but I think um, here in this area, it looks 
really interesting, even if it's not so intensive. If you imagine you would cut this out and use that for a journaling card um, and put a collage on top or leave it like it is, it would be really, really nice. It looks a little bit strange because we have so many bright colors here and like pastel colors here. That's a little bit strange, but that can change in the next seconds. Let's see. What you also could use is some braille paper. This has, as you know, those little dots on top and those give a really, really cool impression when you print with those. Uh, where do we want them? I think this is a little bit big. Perhaps we can tear that down a little bit. I think this is a good size. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put my ink directly to the paper again. I want to use Lucky Clover instead of Cracked Pistachio. I know this is a totally different color than Cracked Pistachio, but um, this is a little bit more intensive and I want to have some green here. Perhaps Peacock Feathers would have been a great color for this as well, but now we have this here. <laughs> Let's try how this will come out. So I'm taking some water and because the pattern of the braille paper is relatively massive, I'm taking some circles. So these are just some circles that I have punched out with a paper punch. This is some coffee dyed paper and this is just some regular like craft paper that really doesn't matter what it is. You could also take some fabric or something like that. I want to place that here. Then I'm making those wet as well from this side. And then I'm going to take the paper here. And when I have such a big piece, I go directly over it with my brayer without the acrylic paint so I can save some time. Uh, acrylic paint, acrylic plate, I'm so sorry. You can go directly over that with the brayer to save some time because you can hold it with your fingers in place. When you have that, you can just lift that up. And as you can see on those circles, we have also more or less of the braille paper pattern. What I'm trying to say is you can use this to create some circles in your pattern. And at the same time, you get an interesting print to those uh, paper pieces that you've used for that. And when they are dry, you can use them for decorating your journal. <laughs> So we can take this off and as you can see, look, that looks so interesting, really, really cool. And with the braille paper, I've experienced that you can um, just take that and get a second print of this somewhere else. And with the braille paper, it works actually really, really good. I think, I mean, I expect that it works better than we've done it here with this other cluster. Ooh. Yeah, look how intensive is this second generation of that. It's just amazing. The color changes a little bit, but as you can see, it looks really, really gorgeous. I am so in love with this technique. You can't believe that. <laughs> If you don't have braille paper, you could also use something else. For example, some paper like this. Um, this is like, yeah, embossed or something. This is like a plasticky pattern and the white areas, uh, uh, the white area is normal, like scrapbooking paper, but perhaps you know those shiny and ugly papers. I really don't like to use them in my junk journals, but for this technique, they are just great. And this, you nearly can't feel it. Yeah, it's really, really like not existing, but it works. So let's try that out. Let's take a strip of this, perhaps <clears throat> for here. And let's also 
take a piece of this. This I want to do with a chipped sapphire again. So I'm just putting the ink here on top of the paper. And because of this golden pattern that is like embossed, the ink will not stay on this surface. Yeah, it's too slippery for the ink. And that's the reason why this will work here with this technique as well. Have I said that I want to put it here? Why? <laughs> what am I doing? So I want to have this here. Like this. This is also big enough to roll over it without the plate. Let's take it off. And as you can see, we have this gorgeous pattern here now. For the next layer, I want to use this embossed piece of paper. This is just made with an embossing folder. This is frayed burlap oxide ink. What I like about this technique is that you don't waste time for waiting for things to dry. If you use a jelly plate and you want to put several layers to your paper, then you would have to be very patient and you would have to let the the acrylic paint that you would use dry. Here you can go on and on and on and print the single layers on top of each other without this time, for uh, without waiting uh, for the things to dry. It is enough if you dry it in the very end even if you could dry it in between, but it's not necessary. And I really, really like that. I really like that you can go on and on and don't um, come out of your flow. Yeah, If you do this here and you think, oh, I want to have this or that or that or that, then do it. You can do it without this waiting time. And this looks absolutely gorgeous. And if you want to go really, really crazy with this technique, then you can also use the Distress Oxide Ink Refillers to get a really, really cool effect. I'm going to use a stencil because that, of course, is also possible. And the first color I'm going to use is Vintage Photo. I'm going to apply this directly from the refiller to my stencil. By the way, this is the number THS138 by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to put this here directly to the stencil. That doesn't have to be much with such a delicate stencil it takes a while until you have it there um, but be patient it will be worth it <laughs> so I'm just putting a few tiny drops here and there then let's decide where we want to put that I think I want to have it somewhere here so I'm putting the water here and then I'm turning the stencil around so that the ink can meet the paper. And then I'm pressing this down. And as you can see, I'm pressing several times with my hand here to the plate so that the ink here can spread around a little bit. You can see we have put a really tiny amount of the reinker here and it spreads all over the place here and you can get really really cool results with that so you want to make sure that the ink yeah goes around a little bit you can take your brayer as a help of course to get that spread out a little bit 
like this. <clears throat> and then I like to leave this for a moment because um, then the, the ink has the chance to soak into the paper and give you a really, really nice impression of that. I will not take that off immediately. If you realize that the plate comes off a little bit from your table, um, I mean, when you do it like this and the ink moves only a little bit, then it's okay, you can leave it. If the ink moves a lot when you press down, then just um, place a heavy book or something on top for a while. And then you, when you lift that up, you get a really nice impression. If you don't have a stencil, then you could also use your leftovers from die cutting. So I have some here. And I'm just putting a tiny little bit relatively randomly here to the paper. Why is my reinker empty? Oh my goodness. Like this. As you can see, that looks really weird. You don't have to put that everywhere. Then let's put water here. Let's place this here. Let's take another acrylic plate. We will leave this here as well for a moment. I'll, and while that is there, we can perhaps make another one here with the flowers. Let's take frayed burlap. And I think we can lift this up and see what we got here. you get such a gorgeous pattern. Isn't this just crazy? This is so crazy. So let's lift this up as well. <laughs> and here we also have a really, really nice impression. Oh my goodness, that is nice. And this area here really surprised me. <laughs> That is really cool. So I would like to show you what happens if you take the photo paper and you print something on top of the photo paper with your printer. So this is just a digital uh, page from my Basics Volume 2 set that you can find in my Etsy shop. I will link that down below for you. Um, those pages from that set are meant to be yeah, like basic pages that you can... Um, print out and then you can customize them with stamping or drawing on them or stenciling or whatever so that you don't have to start with a white page. And this technique, um, of course, comes out totally different when you use something as a base that is already printed. So we have this as a base and then I want to use this piece. So let's put some of the ink here. Hmm. Okay. I think this is a nice background. This is, yeah, like fabric. Um, and those little, yeah, flowers can give a really, really cool impression. So um, if you use this, it would be really helpful to have a piece of felt or something similar that is a little bit smooth that you can put underneath of your paper. And you can see even the tiniest details of this lace. It's absolutely amazing. And when it's dry, you can see it even better. And you could also use an embossing folder for this technique. I want to try this one here um, and I want to put my ground espresso ink directly here to the folder. Let's put more water here and again I'm leaving the felt below so that I can make sure that this material of the folder 
will not destroy my paper. Then you can go over this here directly with the brayer. Lift it up. <laughs> Take this off. That looks really cool. Ooh, the oxidation here on the flowers gets really gorgeous, I guess. And what we also could try is we could try to use this side of the folder. I'm going to put the ink here. Perhaps not too much because this surface here is relatively big. As you can see, this is a lot of ink. So let's try to get this here. Lift that up. Oh! Oh! <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Ah, this is so cool. Look how backgroundish that looks. I don't know if that is a word, but oh my goodness. That is absolutely amazing. I'm really excited how this will look when it's completely dry. But what I'm what I wanted to try is I want to try to take this side of the folder again where we can feel those little dots and I want to add some oxide reinker here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I will quickly dry this with my heat gun. I guess that this is my absolutely favorite result so far. <laughs> this looks so, so cool. I'm totally in love with this. And the very best thing about this is, again, this is waterproof now. <laughs> and because of that, we can take some... Ooh, if I can get this open, we can take some white gesso mixed with water, for example. You could use any other color as well, but with, with white gesso, I would say it's the most impressive what happens here. Because those splatters will stay white. And when I say white, I mean white. Because of the fact that this is now waterproof, the gesso can't soak up the ink anymore. If you would use a watercolor cardstock, for example, or a normal copy paper, and you would put oxide ink on top of that paper, dry that, and then splatter with white gesso mixed with water, the gesso would soak up the ink, and the splatters would turn from white to a really like brownish yellowish color when you have brown underneath from the oxide ink and this can't happen anymore here and your splatters can stay totally completely white forever yeah <laughs> um i hope you like this and i hope you will try this out by your own let me know what you think about this. Perhaps you have some additional ideas what we could try out with this technique. And I wish you a very creative time. See you.